Hi viewers and welcome back. You're watching Get Well, Stay Well. We are live, we're interactive and we're taking your emails, your text messages and don't forget your tweets. We're doing something called the Get Well Challenge on Revelation TV on our Twitter. So if you want to get involved, send us your updates on how you're doing with the Get Well Challenge. It's hashtag Get Well Challenge. Just give, an, give us an update and we'd love to hear from you. Felicity, let's start with some of the emails. Um, I've got an email here from Chris saying, Hi guys, what about juicing? There's a double page story in one of the papers today about the dangers of juicing, but the New World Order would say that they wouldn't, they would say that, wouldn't they? Governments don't want an aging population, only if you have loads of money. After all, it's the elderly with money that keeps all the these very expensive private nursing homes, etc. Um, what are your thoughts? So that's, I, th I believe you've got that's that in your hands. That's the article right here, yes, the juicing. Um, on page 34. Can you just read the headline for us, please? Is juicing making you fat? No, juicing cannot make you fat as long as you're juicing the vegetables. If you're only juicing fruit, of course, that's an entirely different matter, and that's not what I'm advocating at all. We've just been talking about Hippocrates Health Institute, where juice is act the juice is all vegetables and you don't have any fruit at all while you're there. So this is one of the misconceptions. Another one is rotting your teeth. Well, if you are drinking a lot of juices, particularly carrot juices, which have a strong color, um, you just use a straw, you drink through a straw. It only makes common sense, I think. Mm -hmm. And certainly, and starving your body of nutrients. Here you're putting the nutrients into the body. So, of course, the uh, food companies uh, will never want us to be juicing because we won't be eating their processed foods and their trans fats and their um, cheaper salts and uh, all the rubbish foods. So, uh, of course, there will be a backlash and we'll get articles like that. But. I have seen so many people get well. I've got well myself. I've seen thousands of people get well at Hippocrates Health Institute and through Hallelujah Acres, which also talks about juicing. And we know that juicing works. And I think what people have to go with is common sense and what actually works. And if you're putting the wrong foods into your body, the wrong sugars, fats, and salts, particularly the, the diet sugars like aspartame, yeah. uh, monosodium gluten, glutamate, all these excitotoxins, if you're putting those things into the body, of course there is a huge epidemic of obesity. And if people live on green juices, I swear that they will not put on weight. They will in fact go down to their, what they call the fighting weight, your good fighting weight, and uh, that's the weight that you're meant to be. You know, no babies are actually born obese. Mm -hmm. It's something that and, you know, people who've got a lot of weight on are really toxic. The thing is, you don't understand. They think it's just um, greed or something. It's not greed at all. In fact, it is just purely toxicity in the body. And when you get back to the proper foods that God has told us we should eat, then, of course, the body goes back to the right shape. Okay, fantastic. I Thank never you. think of dieting. You yeah. know, I wouldn't dream yeah. of dieting, yeah. uh, trying to lose weight. I just want to keep fit. That's right. And so I don't even use scales. Mm. I soon know my, by my waistband if, um, you know, if I was eating, say, at Christmas and you've had some Christmas cake yeah. or you've had Christmas pudding, just because the whole family are doing that and you have to join in. Yes. But you can quickly put that right again. You know, we're very lucky. The body is very forgiving. And as I always say, it's what you do most of the time. Yes. So you can have the odd bit of wedding cake, you go to a wedding or birthday party, and you join in. Um, but it's what you do most of the time that counts. I think that's a good point you've mentioned as well, because maybe um, when people are socializing with their friends, for example, the friends maybe aren't on their, the same diet or the same nutrition as them. So they feel, what do I do in those kind of situations? What would you advise, if, for example, if they're out in a restaurant? Well, the thing is, with me, most people who knew me before know that I had cancer really badly 11 years ago, and they're pretty amazed that I'm still around. 
So most people are intrigued and they sort of say, well, what do you live on, you know? They, they are actually interested. I think if anyone is ill, if they're in pain with arthritis, for instance, or they have some chronic disease, basically they want to get well. So they will ask you, you know, what would you do? And uh, you can always uh, be a role model and, and a good advertisement for it and uh, just tell them what you do simply. But, you know, it's not a legalistic thing. We're not talking about um, going back to a legalistic lifestyle. We're going back to love and, uh, and a sound mind, basically. Okay, other emails? Yes, there are quite a number of emails. So let's try and go through them, shall we? Um, Jane sent us an email saying, Hi, Felicity. Thank you for your wonderful information. Interesting clip on juicing and blending. I found that blended vegetable juice makes me feel sick. Doesn't suit me at all. On the other hand, juicing green and other vegetables, I find delicious and so so easy to assimilate. Um, since juicing regularly, I don't get the constant cold sores I used to. Um, I used to, and no colds either. Have you any advice on intolerances apart from the avoidance? Thanks again. Well, intolerances, you know, they're usually dairy, wheat, um, and the aspartame, of course. So if you are not well, if you've come out in a rash, you know that you have done something wrong. You've had something wrong to eat or drink. And so basically it's an elimination. It's a process of elimination. Go back to just the juices. Um, if she likes the green juices, that's, that's the best one for her to be on. Um, and you gradually can um, add a few other ones in probably, but if something makes her nauseous, well, don't start with that one, you know. Start with a plain green juice. I don't think the cucumbers have ever made anyone feel nauseous. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I really like to start with that. And of course, I love apples as yeah. well. And I'll eat an apple as well, because yeah. I think it's important to have the whole fruit sometimes. So eat an apple a day, eat an avocado a day, mm -hmm. And it's so easy, avocados as well, aren't they? You literally just open it, get a spoon and you're eating it as well. You know, this is the fastest food in the world. Yeah. You think unzip a banana, you know, eat an apple. For goodness sake, that is the fastest food. Yeah. We talk about fast food and junk food, you know. Um, really, it's common sense again, isn't it? Uh, dear Cyrus and Felicity, thank you for your interesting programme today. Um, Felicity, you have mentioned that you juiced your weeds from your garden. Were, you, were they edible herbs and dandelions or just common weeds? They were mainly dandelions, and, uh, but some others as well. Some of them tasted quite bitter, I must say. But I was just interested because um, so many of my friends who are doctors say that you can juice the weeds from your garden as long as they haven't got any chemicals on them, of course. And up in the eagle's nest where I am, in the flower beds that I've got, uh, obviously there were no chemicals at all, and I was just interested to see what they would taste like. And um, but certainly the wheatgrass has the greatest nutrition in it. Uh, morning, sign Felicity. I I mix wheatgrass, barley grass, acai berry powder with vitamin C powder to drink in one. Is this okay or should I drink them separately? I apologize if this is a silly question as all this goes into one stomach, but wasn't sure if it is whilst in the grass and mixed together. This impede, does this impede any nutrients? No, you can put them all in together. You know, it's, um, you know when we mix protein and carbohydrate and fats together, um, then we have different digestive enzymes fighting each other in the tummy, but when you're just having God's plain foods of the vegetables, you can put anything together, really. I mean, Dr. Brian Clement would say you couldn't even put an apple in with your, with your vegetable mm. juices. It's just literally the vegetable juice, uh, the green vegetable juice. But um, I do put an apple in to sweeten things a little bit for people because most people, when they come on my courses, are so sugar addicted yeah, yeah. that they really can't get anything down that has a bit of sweetness. And you see the taste buds change, as you know. Yeah. Now, if I had a spoonful of sugar, I think I'd be sick because mm -hmm. it would just taste so sweet. And yet, in the old days, the bad old days, you know, I'd have my cappuccino and I'd put it about three Sp uh, spoons of sugar in as yes, well yeah, because yeah. I was so sugar addicted yeah. 
and I'd have my Frosties in the morning, which have all this gorgeous sugar on the top, and I'd probably add some cherries on top, just for a little extra sweetness. I think that's the problem that we have with our children today. They're just sugar addicted, aren't they? They're only sugar addicted if you let them have the sugars. So the thing is, with a new baby, it's so easy. You can start and not get them yeah. sugar addicted. When they go to a party, yes. you know, and they have the Smarties and things, yeah. they'll go, oh, that is so sweet. Yeah. And they, they won't really want it. Yeah. yeah. But it's what they've been given when they're little, because they're entirely dependent on, on what you give them. Yeah, it's something that me and my wife actually have been quite strong about with our little daughter is um, for her not to get used to sweets. So during yeah. the Christmas period, she obviously went to meet Santa yeah. and Santa gives them a sweet and she's like, no, thank you. Oh, well <laughs> and done. Santa was quite surprised thinking, all oh, right, okay. <laughs> and Santa was probably overweight, was he? Yeah. Or was he padded up? <laughs> Very funny. good. Good for her. We'll have her on the show, you know, <laughs> like the little girl who said grace about the turkeys. That was, yeah, yeah. true. Very good, yeah. Um, hi, if one has a blender and not a juicer, what is the best use for that? Well, the blender um, can do things like avocado. You can mix in. You couldn't juice an avocado, for instance. You can't juice a banana. So um, you would put those in the blender. Also in your blender, you can grate the uh, lovely macadamia nuts, the almond, just make them into a delicious uh, something that you can spread on your cereals on your, um, sorry, on your salads. Um, you could have a muesli, you could do all kinds of things in the blender, but um, the juicer is really better, obviously, um, because you're getting more essence of, of the juice into the body, particularly for someone who has been ill and can't digest a lot of pulp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, something we were mentioning earlier, we we're talking about in the in the first part of the program. We we're talking about psychology, how much stress and anything else can affect our minds. And this is an email that we've just received in. It's it says forgive and let do the uh, forgive and let God do the rest. Mm -hmm. And it's mentioning about Ephesians four thirty two. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom here, it also says once you forgive by faith, you will see the sting of bitterness removed from your heart you will experience the peace and joy of God filling your mind and see a greater measure of wholeness in your body. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It it's the only thing that will take the sting out. You pray for people, you forgive them, pray for them, and uh, it does take the sting right out. Okay, this one's here from uh, Roy saying, hi, hi, lovely to see you both. I need some advice, please. I've got arthritis in both of my hips. Do you, can you recommend anything? Well, the arthritis is a buildup of the uric acid that uh, has happened over the years, so it takes a little bit of time. But um, it will happen if you can eliminate the acids. That's the meat and dairy. The wheat, I mean, Leslie was saying um, that wheat really ex exacerbates um, arthritic pain in her body, and it does with a lot of people. So again, it's uh, coming back to God's diet and it will eliminate arthritis. Of course, you can have an, a wearing out of a joint, you know, with these hips, for instance. Um, but the thing is, even if he went and had the hips replaced, the great thing is not to build up the arthritis uh, again. And um, that, that's, the really, that's really the cure. But if the hips are really, really bad that he can't move, then maybe he will have to uh, replace them because sometimes the joint is too far gone. The great thing is to prevent any more happening. Okay. Dear Felicity, our daughter-in-law suffers from bipolar. Can this be affected by her diet, exercise or faith? We want to help her. What advice can you give to us? Thank you for a wonderful program. Oh, well, poor girl, and it's so difficult with a family because the last thing you want to do is upset anybody. But, um, yeah, bipolar can be completely reversed, as we know, Dr. John Bergman, uh, Dr. Andrew Saul, who's actually a professor. Uh, just Google those names, see uh, what they advocate. They all advocate the same thing. We come back on God's diet. And um, all you can do is try to gently educate but really difficult in a family the family is the last one to be able to reach actually but um, 
I, I will pray for that situation as well. And um, certainly it can make a big difference. Okay, Lorna um, has forwarded us on this email here. This is from Paula. Hi, Felicity. Could you please tell me where I can get the seeds to grow the wheatgrass at home? Thank you for your live show. Yes, well, you'll have to go on to uh, Google, um, ask in your local shops, because um, I know my, my source in, in Jersey, um, and it just depends. I, someone today was asking me, and I sent an email. They, they wanted to grow real wheatgrass in Dublin and in fact I googled it and immediately six or seven addresses popped up all with Dublin so these things uh, can be done yeah hi Felicity love your get well um, stay well program I'm trying to eat sensibly and at an average weight I'm at an average weight so don't diet but I do suffer from more or less conny ideas but I do suffer do you have any ideas? Um, and then at the end she says, I've tried changing from cow's milk to soya. I love vegetables and eat some meat. Um, just wish I could stop having to blow my nose so often. And then half of the text is missing. Well, coming off the dairy, make it a little time, but um, the mucoid plaque will dry up. Also do the colonics because believe it or not, the mucoid plaque, which is in your nose and in the phlegm and in the um, you know, in the chest, the lungs, the bronchi, that will also help, be helped tremendously when you do the colonics. Who would believe it? But you see, it's toxicity in the body. And um, when you start doing those coffee enemas and the colonics, in fact, you will get better. Mm. So keep going with it all. It's all there on the website. Lots of information there. I've just put some more information on the website. And... Um, yeah, you can you can do it. This is the way to do it. Just remind our viewers, what is your website, Felicity, to get more information? It's Hippocrates in Europe and uh, HippocratesInEurope.com. And also you can just email me direct on Felicity Corbin Wheeler at gmail.com. And okay. I do read all the emails. I can't answer them all in length, but I try and answer them either on the show or quickly. Okay. Yeah. Hi Felicity, what is the best type of juicer to use for juicing wheatgrass? Well, they have this little handheld one for about £25 that is really, really good and gets an enormous amount of juice out of the wheatgrass. So there you are, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can get these things on, on Amazon and in America you can get them as well. And in fact, the guy who was growing the wheatgrass at Hippocrates Health Institute, really great guy called Michael Bogonzi, um, he was selling these little, they were, I think they were $45, which is about 25 quid or, to, or 30. Uh, but anyway, uh, really cheap. And the thing is, if there's ever a power outage, as they've had in Scotland the yeah. last few days, you can still carry on. It looks like an old fashioned mincer. I don't know if you've ever seen an old fashioned yeah, mincer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you <laughs> screw it on and you push the meat down. Yeah. Dear, oh dear, I remember all that. But. Um, Certainly, yes, you can get them. Um, Lynn is saying, hi, Cy and Felicity, you look stunning. I think she's saying, you look stunning, Felicity. Oh, it must be you, Cy, no, it's you. not me. Yeah. Um, where do I purchase a distiller from? Well, uh, you can get it from several companies. There's um, one called Cytodoc, C-Y-T-O, Cytodoc. Uh, there's Holistic Research, which I've used for donkey's years. Just, and I think Amazon stock them as well. So uh, a lots of choice there. Um, hi, Felicity. Um, can you please tell us how to use the colonics in detail with reason, within well, reason? Well, I'm not going to uh, demonstrate this, and I don't within think Sai is going to either. <laughs> um, I should have brought my, the kit with me, but in fact, you can see it on my website. It all works very simply. Uh, the kit that I sell is actually, you can fold it up so you can put it in the suitcase. Um, you wash it all out with soap and water every time so it's really clean. And we have the soft implant tubes that I get specially, um, which is much better than just the, the uh, original kit. Um, and really the implant tube is just a little, the implant thing is a little bulb which you fill up with the wheatgrass and then you insert. So it's all on my website. If you go on to hippocratesineurope.com and uh, you can see that they, I am selling them. I don't make much on them because by the time I posted them from Spain, 
it might be a couple of pennies, that's all. But anyway, I do provide them because I think there's no one else really providing a proper kit that has everything in it. It's got the vaginal douche, it's got the, um, the colonic kit, it's got the soft implant tube, and uh, it's got the, the, little, um, the little bulb as well. So really everything's together. Plus my lovely book on colonics, uh, where it's all written down for you in easy stages. Excellent, that's fantastic. Um, can we buy the wheatgrass seeds in the garden center as some of us are not on the internet? Well, as long as they're organic and you've got to check that they are properly organic. Yeah. Hi, Cy Felicity. Can you grow wheatgrass in an electric sprouter or would it be best to grow it in a greenhouse in soil? You can do both. You can do it hydroponically. My Fresh Life Sprouter is done hydroponically, so there's a barrel of water underneath, which you have to change during the 11 days, but you freshen it up a couple of times and that's enough. Um, you can grow it in soil. You can do, I've done both. And um, it's really interesting to see slightly different taste and um, it's worth experimenting. Okay, I just want to say thank you to all our viewers. I'm just trying to go through as many as I can now. Uh, I've got last few moments of the show left. Is it acceptable to use powdered wheatgrass and colon cleansers bought over the counter? Well, you can do, and if you can't get the real thing, yep, that's, that's what most people do. You can buy the powdered one and the, um, the frozen one as well. But the, the great thing is to do it and uh, see the difference. It's quite amazing, yeah. Very um, to the body. Okay, I'm just going to scroll yeah. up to see. Get just done a refresh of all the um, things okay. here. Hi, yep. did you want to say? I've something? got one here from Donna, and she says, "I'm. Um, I just want to get rid of acne. Uh, I'm a 16-year-old girl, and I don't drink fizz, and I eat fairly healthy. I think it's probably the uh, the dairy. I usually find that it's the dairy with people. It can be the wheat as well. So um, just." Uh, I'll send you a little note as well, but it, that just came in and I wanted to answer you, Neil. Um, this one here is from Susan saying, I blend fruit and vegetables, no juicing as yet. Um, I also have added a whole food salad, fresh fish, less to no potatoes and spelt uh, bread, shop bought, few red meats. My cholesterol count is very high on HDL, so hopefully scrubs, scrubs the blood, etc. I restrict food intake and don't nibble too much. Only a start, but it's still quite a lot to take in. Well, it's great. You know, making a start is wonderful. And we've got this Get Well Challenge running. And it's just lovely to see how people are starting gently. And I think you've made a lot of changes there. So really good. Well done. And, you know, we, we, we sort of go gently into this. Mm. If you're really ill like I was, you have to go um, straight in cold turkey um, excuse the terrible pun we don't have turkey anymore but um, <laughs> gradually gradually is the way and it sounds as though you've made lots of good changes already uh, hi Felicity what non-sugary cereals are healthy <laughs> well you can have porridge the porridge oats if you get the steel cut um, really really good uh, natural ones that's fine I did that for a long time because I came remember from an egg and bacon sausage and tomato and fried bread breakfast. So I did need to have something again on the journey. Now I just have my juices. But uh, yeah, fine. Uh, very quickly, is there an alternative to chocolate? My grandchild asked for it. She never eat, she never asked for sweets. You see, chocolate has got magnesium in it. And I used to kid myself for years that when I had a little bar of milk chocolate, I was really giving myself magnesium. But in fact, it's much better. Now, Philip Day's wife says that she eats the, the uh, coconut oil, which is cold, has a spoonful of that. If you mix it with a little vanilla essence, I think it tastes quite nice, actually. Excellent. Yeah. Felicity, we are now finally to the end of today's programme. As always, thank you so much for your wonderful um, information to our viewers. Thank you also to our viewers for joining us today. Please do remember that we have a catch-up service on Revelation TV. It's on our website. It's www.revelationtv.com. We're also on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash RTV Europe. We're on social media. We're on Twitter, twitter.com slash Revelation TV. And don't forget, we're doing the hashtag Get Well Challenge. Thanks a lot, viewers. Have a great day. Keep smiling and take care. Bye.